Hey everyone, hope things are great. We got lots of work to get to. We're picking up where we left off from our last video. Let's get on it. Got all the stiffeners in, flipped them around so they're on the inside, Clicos are on the outside. I got the three stiffeners we were talking about, this guy, this guy, this guy, all trimmed back as per the plans. And uh, although I didn't have the extra hole drilled in my skins, basically shifted the, the stiffener down the skin so the hole spacing was the same, drilled the hole, and laid the stiffener in. So you can see I have the end rib in, and I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit here. The next step is to get the stiffeners all done and back riveted into place. Well, you can't do that until they're match drilled and deburred and dimpled. I prefer dimpling the whole skin all at once, so I don't have to go back and do the spar line with all the stiffeners hanging me up and getting in the way. It allows me to have a nice, perfectly dimpled skin. So that's kind of what I'm doing now, just test fitting everything. Everything's fitting up real well. Really like how tight everything is. Obviously there's still some sanding and deburring to do. Once everything is back riveted, then the trailing edge is per the plans. Kind of go back a step, carry on with the skeleton, get the spar all ready to go, get our counterbalance rib all ready to go, adjust our counterbalance. Still got our nut plates and, and everything to get in, so still lots of work left here. I'm basically at where pre-punched kit would be at this point. So I had a little bit extra work than uh, a lot of you guys might. Uh, I'm happy with how everything turned out. I am still going to match drill as much as I can. In the interest of keeping things as straight as possible, on the stiffeners, I'm going to go one at a time and get the Clico back in there. Everything that I want to match drill 
is Matt Trill. So now I'm going to take it all apart. Man, I'm going to de-vinyl all my stiffener runs. And I'm actually going to de-vinyl anything that I plan on dimpling. It's going to be as much as I can once I have it on the DRDT2. So there she is with the tabs all cut off. You know, just rough cuts for now. I, I test fit everything about a million times, guys. I want to see how everything is going to go together. I, I, you know, I just want to see how everything is going to interact. You know, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the hinge and fit it up. Just like I said, when I match drill the skin, I want to match drill it to basically everything. So then I can dimple everything. You can't drill anything after it's been dimpled because the hole has been stretched. So I've got to make sure that all my drilling of the skin is done, which means the hinge line as well. For the trim tab, I'm sure a lot of you guys have either done this or seen this done. I'm not dealing with the folds. I've already mangled one trim tab in my trophy case. So with all the extra parts I have over from getting some... CNC punched end ribs and stuff like that. I'm just gonna make some riblets for the end of the trim tab there and one there and one there. I think they'll turn out nice. Won't have to worry about any bending, minimal weight. That's kind of the route I plan on going. The dreaded trim tab. I know. It's really not that crazy if, if, if you take a different approach to it. So I have decided to cut my tabs off. Showed you guys earlier. What I did for filler is because I bought some pre-punched um, ribs, I had a couple of these guys that were not pre-punched that I used for this and for this. Not really happy with how the first ones turned out. I'd like to have little leaflets in. And right now you can see it just ends at the spar. I don't think it needs to be tied into the spar, but I think I'd, I'd like it to be. And then on this side, I bought 709 rib, which is for the other elevator, obviously. The one without the trim tab. And I then just basically, instead of putting it right there, seeing how it would have the same profile, I used this rib right here and cut it short, which ended me up with this, which really... It didn't fit very well, and the reason it didn't fit is because the height of this spar is off. And as you can tell where my new line is drawn, it was proud of that spar by about that much. So I decided to just, you know what, I got lots of spare material, I'm just going to custom make a riblet. As lots of other people have done, but I might as well use this one as a template. Hole markings for where the uh, control horn stuff's going to be. I kind of keep in mind of how you're going to rivet this thing together too, so what I'm gonna basically do is rivet the one side of this in with this part of the skin, you know, not attached yet and buck all those rivets and I'll probably do the same with the other side and then I will close the trim tab up and rivet this bottom spar line along with the hinge that'll all be tied into the aircraft at that point. I've just, like I said, I got lots of spare material. These are my horizontal stabilizer spars. A little bit thinner material as these aren't really, you know, like structural. I'm just, they'll be a little bit easier to bend. This is kind of what I have all drawn up and I am gonna extend these lines about an inch so I can fold that tab over just because there was a gap right here and uh, I just wanna close that up, make it nice and tidy and that's kind of where I plan on putting to number uh, 30 holes into this guy right here. I've also widened this one leaflet just a little bit just to prepare myself or give myself a little bit of grace when it comes to edge distance on these holes. 
because like I said, I'd like to tie them in one, two, three to that riblet when it, it goes in there. So that'll make this, this area nice and strong and I won't have to worry about messing up a second trim tab on uh, bending those tabs over. Here's the second version. See, I got something to tie into the spar. It's still not quite right. Couple things. I have cracks. So this piece is scrapped. So I think I gotta file in some good uh, round notches like I did up here prior to bending that. And I'm also gonna try to use a newer piece of aluminum because the material I grabbed from this guy here, this is a 2001 horizontal stabilizer spar that I chose not to use because it's not pre-punched. So there might be some age hardening going on here, which is not leading me to much success. I'm pretty happy with the shape apart from the edge distance on that forward hole. So we're going to extend that, that portion right to butt up with the, this line right here. Again, that's so we can use the existing holes, which is that hole right there. We'll be tying in with that guy. So it's going to be dimpled. This is going to be dimpled, so i got to make sure that I have really good edge distance here. And uh, that notch is just so it clears the Clico. As soon as I saw the cracks, I figured, well, I might as well use this as a second template now, a second prototype. So first I ran this one, which is the 709 rib cut. Then from that, I made this. And now I'm going to flatten this um, and sketch it out on a newer piece of Alclad. Hopefully when I bend it up, I won't have any cracks. And before I bend it up, I am going to drill this to a 40 and dimple it. Because dimpling this after the fact is going to be very difficult. I'm just going to probably drill and dimple these and I'll use this as the match, match drill and dimple everything before I bend if possible. Hopefully the bending process won't mess my dimples up, but uh, if it does, we'll just make a fourth one. Okay, so I got my other one all laid out. This is uh, a fairly new E702 spar, but came damaged, those two little spots right there. But it's new, fresh material, in the last six months anyways. So I'll be cutting this out, and tightening up the root of it as well. Try to get a little bit of a tighter taper. Okay, Mark III, much better. Uh, got good reliefs in there, and the reliefs down there really helped. No cracking. Uh, the method I used for bending, basically just clamping down this piece of angle iron to the bench, and then using a piece of hardwood and just tapping uh, the piece slowly over onto here, and then when I needed the tighter radius, I just flipped the piece upside down and I hit from bottom to up. So, um, because this is only, I believe, one eighth aluminum angle, it, uh, it was enough clearance. So that worked out really well for me. The first time I did it, I used, you know, a couple of these things and they marred the hell out of it. And I wasn't happy with it, so we abandoned that. Even, even these, I got tape on there. I still got serrated edges on there. So the Vans block of wood and, and, a, and, a, and a knockometer, it, uh, it worked. So. Hey, what do you know? I, I'm just in the process of getting this dimpled. You can see um, there's the original hole, and now I got good edge distance. And again, no, no more cracks. This still needs to be shaped final. It's not going to need to really be that long. You can see my rough mark is there, but always easy to cut off rather than add, right? So I'm just going to come over here. Let's see if I can park you guys right here. I gotta go real nice and slow on this because you see I can't get to either either die really properly. And so I'm just gonna pull back the blue just a bit and get my foot feeling again. There we go, we got the hole and send it. That's a good dimple. I'm happy with that. Looks good on the inside as well. And I did match drill and deburr this hole before I did that. But now it should fit a little better. It's got a little bit more trimming to do because I got a little bit of interference at the root of the trim tab spar and, and right here. So I'm just going to take care of that interference 
It's it's just it's right there, guys. But I I, I want to maintain that edge distance. That's really good. But there's just a little bit right here that I got to get rid of. Well, all right. I was kind of jumping ahead a little bit, and I was trying to make it so I could match drill every single hole on the skin. And for me to do that, I need to have this trim tab placed. And then I started uh, making my riblets. But what I've done is I've made my riblets, and I haven't set the final profile of my stab yet. So, if I take my ruler and I set it across right here, you'll see that I'm nowhere near where I need to be. Vans wants to see that flat. And I don't want to bend the stab until I've done all the riveting of these back stiffeners. Which is why they want you to just do the stiffeners and then deal with the spar and come back and dimple that line of rivets afterwards. And then the tail. So what I've decided to do is I'm not going to do this line here where it deals with the trim tab and hinge. I'm probably going to have to throw the riblets that I've made in the garbage or at least use them as templates for smaller ones because back here at the trailing edge that's going to be much skinnier. I don't have this one made. do have this one made but same deal. I haven't pinched off the end of my trim tab therefore at the back there it will be too thick so I will have to remake this. We did number one and this was number two and then this was number three and it looks like there will be a number four. That's what you get. I was trying to skip ahead. RTFM. Read the manual. Anyhow. All part of building. I want to show you guys these. Pretty sure they're made by Cleveland Tools. They're really great. They put a small chamfer on the rolled edge. Much easier to do now. Really, this surface is, is still protected with the blue film. One thing you don't want to forget, you want to start just off the edge of the material with just light pressure, clamp it down, and keep the rolled edge up against the material. And it's just a slight, slight chamfer, and you can go right off the edge. There you go. Nice light chamfer. And then because we didn't start on the tail end, just clamp it back over and push to the last little bit. And then I'll get you right onto the edge. So I know it's really tough to see. So it's very slight but it stops this edge from rolling up once you have these rivets in. 